with what Kenny's brought to the football club. Um, obviously, uh, getting the deal done was was good. Um, I think the the club's now in a position where they're they're signing players up, you know, a long time before they're actually out of contract, which I think's you know a sign of a good club. And I think, you know, when we had that discussion with some of the players, we, we wanted the club to get to that position where it wasn't you know waiting till they're out of contract and actually after the contract expired. We, we want our football club to come a place where you you want to hang around, you want to see what uh, what's going on, and you want to be involved in it. And I mean, it's a it's a big credit to what Kenny and you know the staff that he's brought over, and uh, you know we've been able to bring into the the start, um, to the the football club and, and with Peter Road, and they've done a tremendous job in, in that area. And I think it's uh, it's starting to work, which uh, which is good. Jacko, if you go back to one or two contracts ago that you signed, there was a lot of speculation of you know wanting to be in an exodus, a lot of Melbourne guys wanting to go home, that sort of thing. The talk is that you were one of the first blokes that did sign up and said, "Look, we've got to stay here. We've got a group we can build from this." Is that true? Yeah, correct. I mean, we we sort of sat down and we knew that we had, you know, the the players required to to become a, a, a better football club, and it was just about you know working out some some other areas, which you know obviously working harder than what we're working at the time, and really finding out how to how to actually work harder, and you know some things needed to be changed around the football club, and um, you know it was a, a massive credit to to the staff for for listening to what us players had had to say at the time. Um, which what we thought was going to, you know, we, you know, they had the same idea as well. It wasn't just us coming and saying, "Bang, this is what's going to happen to change the football club." It was two two heads meeting. It was just a, a man-to-man discussion with some of the the staff, which was a, a good thing. And it was good that the boys, um, you know, decided to stay. It's, it's starting to see the the light at the end of the tunnel, which was, you know, we had some really dark days at the football club, but um, you know, we're starting to see where we're, where we're heading, and um, you know, the journey's a, a lot better than what it was a couple of years ago. You might not want to pat yourself on the back too much, but that's. That's real leadership, doing something like that, getting the guys together to stand together and say, this, we will get through this. Yeah, I mean, it was just a time. It, it, something had to be done. It was, you know, it was, a, it was a point at the football club where we could have lost five or six players and, you know, that, that was some good quality players. Wanted to, you know, we had some, some players that, uh, you know, one's our, one's our captain now. So we had some players that if, if we had lost those players, we, you know, it was going to be a long way back. The club would have been set back, uh, you know, a, a bit further than what it, what it was at the time. So... It's probably just a decision where we're all on the same page, but it, it, you know we we actually need to come together to discuss it. Not you know players don't want to talk about contracts and and um, you know what you're actually going through with one another. It's just a funny thing that happens at football clubs. You sort of just that's your business. You, you deal with it with the manager and and the football club. But um, you know we had that uh, as I said a second ago that man talk with one another and um, you know it, uh, it worked out really well. What have you found uh, the effects are of those sort of darker times on the group these days? Like people, are you sort of what lessons did you learn? I think we just realise how um, how hard you've actually got to work to to get um, to get to the top. I mean, you, you sort of see those great football clubs, you know, Hawthorne and, and Geelong at the top, who, who we've always aspired to, to become. But when you when you're down the bottom, you're not actually sure how to actually get there. And it's probably through hard work. That's the only way that you can you can possibly get to to where they've gotten. For us, we're still on this journey. We you know we've only. Just started, um, just started our journey really with with where we want to be. Um, obviously, we're, we've been winning some games, which has been fantastic. But it can, it can all it can all change very quickly. Um, our group's a, a group that are realists. We're not, you know, we don't believe in in everything that that happens. We know that we've got a lot of hard work to go to, to where we want to be, which is you know every AFL club wants to, to win a premiership. So Jay's comment after his eight goals on the weekend that the group's harder on itself now than it ever has been. It sort of stems from that. Spot on. Yeah. yeah, I didn't actually hear that comment, but um, if he said that, yeah, he's, no, he's spot on. I think you you look at um, probably last week where we we come very close to a quality opposition in, in the Swans, and you know they're as they're as good as they as good as they get, and um, you know we were really disappointed with a, a close loss. Where in previous years we would have been over the moon to get got close to Sydney, where where our football club is now at the stage where we're disappointed with close, close losses. We we don't accept losses whether they're big or small, and you know, we want to win every single game we play. Just uh, on Jay's very modest after the game, can you give him a pump up? It was a pretty, pretty good effort. No, I reckon he's, he's, he's pretty spot on. I actually haven't heard any of his comments, to be honest. But I think what Kenny says with, you know, that it, it, it's, it's all about a team. Our, our, our football club now, I mean, eight goals is a is super effort and, and Schultz is an absolute uh, absolute gun. And, and the way he kicks his goals is, is super. He works really hard to to get the ball. But I think Schultz would probably enjoy, you know, handing one over to someone else as, as much as anyone else. I think our football club's now at the time, it doesn't matter who kicks the goals. It, you know, if he's kicked the bag of eight, but 
he'd be more happy with the, you know, one of the tackles that he laid on the weekend or one of his second efforts that he dove on a ball. I think all that little stuff that we, you know, we take um, as, a, as a club and probably appreciate the little things like that probably more than eight goals, if, if that makes sense. I think you know, eight goals for any, for any player is a, a super effort. And, you know, we're half five and after the game that he, he, he kicked eight and I wanted to kick ten. But, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think the football club and our forward line, just the way they move and, and share the ball, I think that's probably, um, that's probably special than, than eight goals. When Ken, when Ken says things like, you know, I probably get to pass mark and... After Chad took that hanger, he's like, "Oh, we'll think about the bloke that kicked it and that sort of thing." Is, I mean, is that for real? Like, can't you enjoy I think the it is. Of it? No, I mean, we enjoy it. Don't worry. Behind behind the scenes, we're we're high fiving each other about good stuff. We we enjoy, you know, seeing Chad go up for a screamer and, and Shilty kick eight goals. And, but I think there's also that honesty about Ken, and he actually appreciates how it actually happens and 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 the hard work that goes into getting the ball forward, or whether it be a one on one contest that one of the boys has won. It's probably the appreciation for for the game um, and the little things that, that get you those big you know spectacular mark that ch- the chatty mate mate no, we're not we're not stupid we know that that was a that was an absolute scream and we know that you know eight goals is a, is a huge haul but it's the little things that add up for for the big picture that um, this football club takes uh, takes very seriously. I guess where you're going, you know, twenty years down the track you'll remember a premiership of course, but you might forget eight goals against the Bulldogs in round fourteen. Spot on. You got that. You got that medallion forever once you got it. So. I think, um, yeah, as you, as, you, as you just said then, I think that that, that team success is, is the ultimate. It's, it means so much more than any, you know, one day that you have where you, where you kick eight goals. And I think Schultz is your, your prime example for that bloke. If you ask him which is his, his favourite game that he's played in, he's, you know, he's taken, taken the big grabs, he's, he's kicked a, a, a bag full of goals. But I, I reckon he'd probably say that first final that, that he won where he'd worked so hard in his career to, to play finals. And, didn't quite achieve it till, till last year, and, and now he wants obviously the, the ultimate goal with, with the premiership. How do you rate the challenge this week, mate? Huge. Yeah, I think they're in um, they're in really good touch. Obviously, they they uh, they probably fell a little bit short on the weekend against uh, Essendon, who's a, another quality opposition. But you know we've been um, we've been keeping our eye and watching a lot of vision on on the Crows, and you know they've been in, in really good nick. And um, you know it doesn't matter in a showdown whether where you are on the ladder, and we say this all the time, and, and we build them up as, as much as we can, but. That's the honest truth, and um, this week will, will be no different. The start to the game was horrific. They can see it heavily on the scoreboard. You have to look to exploit that, wouldn't you? Uh, we didn't have a great start either, but um, yeah, I think uh, I think at any time of the game you you, you want to start well. I think we, we build up our start as, as much as anything to get a, a really good start. And probably one thing that we're a little bit disappointed on the weekend was our start as well. So we're going to have to tidy up that area if we want to try and get on top of the game early. It must be good though to know that you had a bad start and even though the Bulldogs are a, a lowly ranked side that you could put such a gulf in between you on the scoreboard? Yeah, I think I think the boys um, in the second half, we really got going and, and got into a little bit of a groove and um, probably wanted to play that, 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 that footy for four quarters, um, which as I said, we, you know, we, it was a good game of footy, but you said that um, they're a little bit lower, but they, they beat uh, the Magpies, who are a quality opposition as well, the, the week before. So the Bulldogs have been in some, some really good touch, and they've got that inside midfield that's, that's really strong. So, um, you know, you want to get off to a good start in every game, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. And, and for us, it was just about building into the game. And as you said, we're able to get that gap, which, is, which was nice. The Crows' um, season's obviously really on the line now. Does that make them a bit more dangerous? I think that they're dangerous every week. I think if you look at the, the quality of play that players that they've got in their side, I mean their midfield's as, as strong as any in the AFL, and their forward lines obviously, um, you know, for, for my job is, is going to be giving me nightmares for the first uh, couple of days leading up to it. So um, I think they're dangerous no matter what situation. But as you said, clubs do seem to get that, you know, their backs against the wall a little bit. I, I remember, it, you know, when we were our backs were against the wall, you always find a little bit more, but. I think um, you know for a showdown the crows are going to be up and about and, and, and we will be too. Do you reckon it'd be weird being the away team at Adelaide? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I've always wanted to watch a game at Adelaide, which uh, which we're not playing in. But um, no, I don't think it'd be weird. I mean, it's going to be a, a different atmosphere. Obviously, their their crowd will get out there, but um, you know, it's the it's still the same structured ground. We love playing on Adelaide Oval. It's a it's a perfect venue and. It's just going to be a, an interesting experience with um, people probably booing for us where um, in, pre- in previous weeks we've got um, the crowd behind us and, and our crowd's been super all year for us. Do you think you guys will be back to full strength for the first time in a little while? Um, yeah, I think, um, I think you say full strength, but I reckon we've, you know, we've brought in some players that have played some really super roles over the last couple of weeks. I mean, you look at Tommy Logan who, who came in for his first game on the weekend and 
you know, he was as good as anyone on, on the weekend and, and did his job. So I think, um, you know, you, you're going to have injuries. Every every team's got injuries throughout the year. It's just about how you how you deal with them. And the players that we've brought in to, to play the role have, have done a super job. And that's a credit to the to the, to the sample side that we've we've got playing in there at the moment. And, and obviously the development staff that that are working really hard with the the younger kids and and the kids that are. Um, you know that aren't quite in, playing AFL, but um, you know they, sh they they could quite quite easily could be.